people. Come on, just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Come on, just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Come on, just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for never leaving me. Come on, help me sing this chorus real quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being for me, for me. I gotta say thank you, Lord, for being there for me. Come on, is that your testimony today? Somebody say, when I was going down.
Yeah. Cause our belief system to be stirred. Oh, Cause our belief system to be reconnected. Hallelujah. Cause our belief system to go higher. Yes. Cause our belief system to go deeper. Yes. Cause our belief system become stabilized. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, as we hear the word of God. Word of God is Jesus. Cause us to become stabilized Hallelujah. in what we believe. Oh, yeah. Lord, we will be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and the glory for the anointing is on your word. And the anointing is in your servant to speak the word. Now cause your anointing to fill the ears and the hearts and the minds of your people. That we might believe beyond what we see. Come on. Yes. Oh, we yeah. walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Hallelujah. Help us to go beyond what we looking at. Yeah, yeah. Because oh. without faith, we can't please you. It's impossible. But he or she that believeth must believe that he is God must believe in God Hallelujah. and on. believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We are believers, Lord. Yes. Manifest yourself. Manifest yourself in the midst of us yes. and have your way in the name of Jesus. Way, Everybody said amen. We want to dismiss the children, the young people today, to go to youth class. We're going to release you to Pastor Stephanie so that you all can go and receive at your level. Amen. What thus saith the Lord, the gospel. Yeah, we want the children to be believers too. Yes. And they can't believe in what they don't know about. Yeah, which is my sermon today is out of Romans 10 and 14. And then I'm going to the first chapter of St. John. Romans 10 and 14 says, what shall we say then? Hold up. That's the wrong chapter. 10 and 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Now, I was one of those preachers that didn't want to be sent. I didn't want to preach. And Lord help me for these people that want to make a career of it. It's, <laughs> it's about you knowing who God is. You can't say what he didn't say. And you can't uh, apply what you don't know. So people that want to make a career of this is ridiculous because God has to call you and then he has to send you. And he doesn't send you until he has taught you what his word or will is. The word is his will and purpose. Mm -hmm. May I have that bell? I just need something else to lay on top of these pages. Amen. So I am, you know, I've met many preachers uh, that say, you know, God called them and and I and I'm I've disputed with some. <laughs> and uh, as I grew in the grace, I came to the conclusion, you know what, they gotta stand for before God for that, and I'm gonna stop arguing with them about that. <laughs> but as a bishop, things are revealed to you about people and uh, 
even their relationship with God. Because inside the bishop, there is also the prophet. There is also the evangelist. At least in me, anyway. I don't know how other people started, but I started at the nursing home and on the street corner. That's how I started. In the backyard of a recreational facility on a hill. With birds flying over and butterflies flying in front of us. In the backyard. Where the crazy boy next door was peeping through the... The, the bushes at me. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, I feel, uh, you know, the preachers say, I feel my help coming. But that ain't what I'm trying to say. I feel Sister Denise with me today because I got on the Sister Denise hat. Got on the Sister Denise hat today. So I feel like Sister Denise with me today. I got that amen from heaven. But, but I'm telling you, I didn't want to be a preacher because every woman pastor that I met was, their family was, their children was messy. And I was determined that mine wasn't going to be messy. You, you know, if they messy, they don't live here. Because I would still be pastoring them or they don't let me see it. <laughs> but I'm telling you that being a woman pastor in 19, uh, I started the church in 1990. Uh, I started evangelizing in actually before 1979 because I was with some Baptist brothers and we used to go sing from church to church, group to group with the quartet groups. And uh, I was on the piano and I looked up one day and them boys was... They had started uh, temptation on me. I, I was looking at the piano, we singing. I looked up and they was. <laughs> you know, y'all know me right. I want to stop and say, what y'all doing? <laughs> but you got, you know, people is in the pulpit looking at your choirs in the pulpit. People, I could not believe they done went home and practiced some steps and didn't tell me. Because I would have shot that down, okay? Don't be messing with the temptations. Y'all ain't them. And these dudes is back behind. They behind me doing the temptation steps. And we only had, uh, we had two ladies and four brothers and the brothers and Abel. Oh my goodness. And, uh, but I'm telling you, that was nothing to me to go sing. But when God started talking to me about preaching, you know, he would say, speak, and I would say, hey, well, speak ain't preach, so uh, okay, you know, maybe, okay. I took it very lightly until one day, out of a 90-year-old woman's mouth came, God has called you to preach. That messed me up. And then I went to church, probably two Fridays later, and uh, Bishop Willis called the prayer line and was calling people out, and he started praying for me and said, preach, and shook his head and backed up like, you can't be talking about her. Well, that's the same thing I was thinking. I was right in agreement with his little backup, you know? So he went to the altar and prayed for himself. Came back and told me, God said, preach. And uh, it's a task. Because you can't say what, you can't say God said if God didn't say. That's going to get you in a lot of trouble <laughs> real quick. You can't tell people stuff. You can't be making it up. You know, Judge Judy said, you make it up a story. <laughs> if you tell the truth, you won't have to remember <laughs> a whole lot because the truth will just come on out. And so I have found that believing in God is real to me. He has been a friend, a comforter, a counselor. Wow, a sister, a brother. Um, my defender, protector. When the doctor said this, God said no. He's been a healer. When the doctors, 
uh, uh, tried to set me up for some stuff. We fasted, me and my daughters, and God sent a word and said, no, this is what it is. And I'm telling you that except your faith be stirred and motivated by the word, you don't have no faith. Because God is faith and faithful. And his word is the word of faith, faithfulness. So I have been on the names of God. And uh, I'm going to the names of Jesus in a minute. El Hanun, the gracious God. Metsuda Fortress. Yahweh Suri, my rock. Hey, hey, I am that I am. Abba Father. Daddy. Esh Okla, a consuming fire. Migdal Oz, strong tower. El Olam, the everlasting and eternal God. El Shaddai, the almighty, pourer forth, breasted one that nourishes us. El Elohim, almighty creator. El Elyon, most high God. El Roy, the God who sees me. Ruach El, God's spirit. Kedosh Yisrael, Holy One of Israel. Ruach Kedosh, Holy Spirit. Ish, Husband. El Kana, Jealous God. Shofet, the Righteous Judge. Malek, my King of Kings. Adonai, my Lord of Lords. El Shay, Living God. Jehovah Azer, my help. Yes. Mashiach, Messiah. Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Rapha, or Rafika, my healer. Jehovah Sidkenu, my righteousness. Jehovah Shama, he never leaves me nor forsakes me. He's right there. Jehovah Nisi, my banner, my victory. Jehovah Yahshua, my savior. Jehovah Mekidish, my sanctifier. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach, verse 15 says, except they be sent? Well, this takes me to um, Luke 4. Hallelujah. And pray for me. <laughs> uh, because what I studied our week was not this. <laughs> and the Lord sent this. Luke 4 and 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Woo, to preach deliverance. To those that are held captive, recover sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it back to the minister and sat down. This was Jesus. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you live, what you drive, what your financial status is, what uh, uh, nationality you are, whosoever you are that believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. I love that because that opens the door to all mankind and it's by faith that you might receive the grace to do it, to live it, to trust him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 4 and 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with different kinds of diseases and torments, those possessed with devils, those that were lunatic, those that had paralysis, and he healed them. So if there's anything bothering you today, you can receive God's best. Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Jesus meaning Savior. Christ meaning anointed one. The one God anointed to save us. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's just a blessing to know what is offered to you as an inheritance. We are joint heirs with Christ. We inherit the promises. Woo, glory to God. You don't have to be sick. Jehovah Rapha, Old Testament that says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, is Jesus in the New Testament saying, according to your faith, so be it. According to your faith, be of good cheer. Go and sin no more. According to your faith, your faith has made you whole. Same God, same Jesus. Oh, I love it. I love it. He's not trying to confuse you. Jesus Christ, the same, Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Yesterday, that's Bible days, today, that's our day, and forever, that's tomorrow and beyond. Yes, amen. You know, Toy Story, he spread his wings, said, from infinity to beyond. Uh, that's what your faith ought to be. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm excited, amen to talk to you about who Jesus is. I'm in John now. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. We talked about that, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we introduced the name Elohim. Almighty Creator. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We talked about that. The word was with God. Mm -hmm. No, in the beginning was the word. This word that was in the beginning was with God. Mm -hmm. And this word was God. Ah, yes. Verse 2, the same Jesus or word was in the beginning. So we immediately see God positioning Jesus in his creative association to the Godhead. In Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, Father God created heaven and earth. In verse 2 it says, and the earth was without form and void and empty and dark. And, 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 and uh, the 
spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep. In verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light. The word that came out of his mouth was Jesus. The action that occurred afterwards was the Holy Spirit, and there was light. John 1 and 1 reaffirms that Jesus was there in the beginning. John 1 and 2 says, He was the same Jesus that was in the beginning. John 1 and 3 says, all things were created in the beginning, were made by him, Jesus. We got to get our belief system intact, secure, solid, concrete, stable, unified. And we need to walk by the same room. We need to believe the same thing. We don't need one person believing this, one person saying that, and somebody else saying it. No, it's all right here. We didn't make it up. It is written. Thank God it's written. Verse 4, 1 and 4. In him, Jesus was life. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes only for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus told the woman at the well in chapter 4, verse 13, whoever drinks this well water, you're going to thirst again sooner or later. Verse 14 of John 4, but Jesus said, whoever you are that drinks the water I give shall never thirst again. But the water I shall give you shall be in you, springing up like well water, fresh. Have you ever tasted well water? It is so good. I tasted well water in New York. There was a lady that we spent the night with. She had a well in her backyard. Well water is so refreshing. In John 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus, John 3 and 3, Truthfully, truthfully, I say to you, this is the gospel. Come on, come on. This is what he said. Except a man, a woman, boy, a girl be born again. You can't even see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus missed what Jesus was saying. When Jesus said you must be born again, Jesus was speaking straight up truth. He said, except, three and five, a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom. John 4 and 6, Jesus said, stop trying to reason spiritual wisdom by our limited practicalities. Because Nicodemus was a Bible scholar and a devout church goer, but he said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? Jesus is not talking natural. He's talking kingdom talk. Jesus said what you're talking about is fleshly birth, verse 6 of John 4. But I'm talking about being born of the Spirit. This is a spiritual birth. Verse 7, don't be confused that I said you must be born again. I'm going back to John 1 and 4. In him, Jesus was life. We're established and the life of Jesus is the light governing our lives. John 1 and 5. The light, the life, who is Jesus, was presented and shined into our darkness. And it took God to enlighten us because we didn't understand that he was trying to save us. We didn't understand. From age 20 to 28, I was a drug addict. And I was in church. <laughs> I was playing for three, three choirs and two groups. I was head usher of the usher board. I was in the prayer band and on the mission board. I did, I saw, oh, I taught Sunday school. Sold enough chicken dinners to build a cafeteria. 
but I didn't know who Jesus was in my heart. I didn't know that he was the savior and that he wanted to save me. I didn't know that I needed to be saved. I thought I was saved because of the works that I was doing. Works can't save you. It has to be a personal confession that Jesus Christ is Lord in your life. I am an example that while I was doing the right things, I was still smoking weed. I was still drinking slow gin fizz with a twist of lemon. And I was, I had to be everywhere the pastor had to be, I was the musician. I had to be at every rehearsal. Because I was on the usher, but I was on everything. I had to be every I had to be at teacher meeting. So I was learning the Bible. Learning, reading the Bible is not enough. It's not like the Bible getting in you. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. The Bible got to get inside you. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the words of the Lord. You keep reading it. You keep hearing it. It'll get inside of you. You keep praying it. He'll change you. He changed me. And took the drug habit overnight. Oh, it wasn't just weed. Because you know, smoking weed is legal now in a lot of places. People don't call themselves a drug addict now because they smoking weed because you can buy it. It's, it's for sale in California. It's legal in some states. But I was doing, it took me further than I wanted to go. And I started out with weed. I started out with the Boone's Farm and drinking Boone's Farm, drinking Spagnata, drinking that mad dog. It'll make you act like a mad dog. But the devil wants to kill you. He don't want you to stop at a little dab do you? He don't want you to stop at a little sip of wine. No, he wants you drunk out of your mind. Because the thief comes only, the Bible say, to steal, kill, and destroy. So I'm telling you, Jesus is a savior. I am a witness. He saved me. Because I went from doing those things to, to, to Black Molly's, taking Black Molly's, and uh, I was not overweight. That was a diet pill, and I wasn't taking it because I was overweight. I was getting high. I was taking a, a half a Black Molly, putting chewing gum on the other one so I could do that later or tomorrow. And I was drinking, I was smoking weed, and I eventually was snorting crack cocaine. And God is the one. Ooh! The, the word, the Bible says it's quick. It will separate bone from marrow, spirit from soul, intentions of the heart from the mind. He did that for me. He separated my spirit from the soul that wanted to keep doing drugs. He cleaned me out. He washed me. The Bible says, uh -huh, such for some of you, you was this and you was that and you was the other. But now you're washed. Now you're sanctified. Now you are a believer. See, ain't nobody got to tell how bad I was. I will talk about myself because there is a difference when the gospel enters into your heart. Glory be to God. Jesus, according to John the Baptist, was the true light illuminating every person born into the world. John 1 and 9, 10. Jesus was in the world. I'm just trying to get to 14. Jesus was in the world. world was made by him but didn't recognize him. Didn't know who he was. Are you still one of those that don't know who Jesus is? And we sing a song that says, Everybody don't know. Oh, everybody don't know. Who Jesus is, who Jesus is, 
Everybody don't know. Verse 11, Jesus came to the Jews first. His own brethren, they didn't receive him. They didn't accept him. Verse 12, but as many as received him, yes. even to this day and age we live in, if you receive him as Savior and Lord, he will give you power over sin, power to live as sons and daughters of God, even to all who believe on his name. Verse 13, power was given to those who have allowed Jesus to be born in you. Not from man's bloodline or lust, but born of God by the Spirit of God. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh, birthed in the flesh, lived among us, and we looked upon him and lived with him, watching the glory, John said, the glory that we knew came from someone greater. It was the Father's glory, full of grace. Jesus was full of grace and truth. Amen. You can take a praise break right there. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for life. Thank God for revelation unfolding. Thank God for being free to worship. Thank God for being free to know him. Thank God for welcoming you into his family. Fighting the good fight of faith is only because a good God has revealed the secrets to life. Yeah. Father God sent Jesus to bring us back into family fellowship yeah. with him and men. Adam gave it up. Jesus took the keys back. Reopened Eden's doors to us by faith. God didn't create the Garden of Eden to tease us. He was showing us that he would provide a happy life. Let's get back to Eden. The plan that God started with. Jesus paid the price so you can live satisfied and healed. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, and I am at the end, that he gave his only begotten son on earth. If you believe on this son, Jesus, you won't perish, but be reinstated back into God's household of faith, a new creation, born again. Old sins and fears are passed away, and behold, we, come, we become new. It's God initiating his plan of saving grace in our behalf. The plan of salvation consisted of and continues only with Jesus. The truth about Christian faith is that except you believe on Jesus whom God the Father has sent to redeem us, All right. except you believe in the miracle birth, virgin birth, Except you believe in his miracle producing life, his sacrificing death, his miracle resurrection, we have not been redeemed with corruptible things like money, silver, gold, etc. But we are redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, who willfully gave his life to satisfy the penalty of sin. The foundation is already laid follow him truth is released into your soul read about him all the bible is true and relevant to change our lives the gospel speaks personally to deliver us from every kind of darkness and demonic plot all we need is jesus christ I think it's Romans 5 and 1 that says being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Yes. The foundation has been laid. And Philippians 2 and 9 says, wherefore God is highly exalted. God orchestrating the theme and the process called salvation. 
God has highly exalted him. Yes. Given him a name above every name. Hallelujah. Gave us a plan to live by. Gave his son to die and be punished in our place. The great exchange occurred. Jesus took our place, was arrested, interrogated, beaten, humiliated, killed. Made atonement for our crimes and our rebellion. Bruised for our iniquities. Chastised for our peace. Yes. The beating we deserved for sin was on his shoulders. Yeah. And by his stripes we are healed. He took the punishment and gave us peace. Yes. He took the sickness and gave us healing. He took the death sentence and gave us life, yes. freedom, power, fellowship yes. with the Father. Yes. With his stripes which represent the scourgings, the beatings, he endured the humiliation, stripped naked, rejected the embarrassment so that with his bruises, his wounds, we are healed. I want to encourage you today. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. It's Matthew 11 and 28. He said, and I will give you rest. Yes. He said, take my yoke, that's the word upon you, and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly, and that's how you're going to find rest yes. for your souls. Yes. He said, for my Yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes. Come to Jesus. Yes. He died so we could live. He forgave us of all our sins and made us the family of faith. I encourage you to read your Bible and pray. Yes. And get rejuvenated. Yes. In Jesus' name.